Well, good morning. good morning. So, if your soul is healthy, you're going to have the right attitude when it comes to things in life. And if your soul is unhealthy, <laughs> it doesn't matter what your circumstances are, you're going to have a hard time. And so, we're going to be looking at this idea of the soul, and I'm hoping that you'll get a glimpse into eternity and the eternal nature of part of who you are. And uh, the most important part. And yet we don't think about it a lot. So we're going to talk about truths today of the soul and spirit. But I brought an illustration for you. What is this called? A cookie. What does Cookie Monster like? Cookies. So what does Cookie Monster say? Cookie. I need cookie. Me need cookie. Now we'll tell you a few years ago they were getting worried about Cookie Monster. And his weight, apparently. So there was actually, and you can Google this, it's hilarious. They have Cookie Monster saying, Me no need to eat only cookies. Me need vegetables and fruits. And there's a whole vegetable and fruit Cookie Monster. So I guess he's the Cookie Monster who now is diabetic. I'm not sure what the deal is, but... Me Cookie Monster want cookies. Now here's the thing about us. And what I want to do today is a very difficult... Uh, topic. And, and so whether or not you're a Christian, if you're checking out the claims of Christ, I hope that when we look at the soul, I can give you some simple illustrations to just kind of understand what's going on. And today we're going to, in the next couple weeks, we're going to be looking at uh, uh, Romans chapter 8. But I want to talk about what matters to people. Because a lot of people, Cookie Monster only thinks about cookies. Some people never think about their soul. We were in Boston this week. At the end of the week, we, we uh, actually flew into Boston, direct flight, drove to Stowe, got to see some leaves, drove back to Boston, spent some time in Boston. But at the hotel, we saw this sign, emergency exercise in progress. I am not kidding you. My genius wife said, when I first saw that sign, I thought maybe it was a Zumba class. To which I said, jazzercise, and she said, you are dating yourself. <clears throat> so we went outside, and they were the, the uh, Coast Guard was doing a, uh, a drill there. And what they were doing, they were uh, um, reenacting or, or acting out a plane crash if it crashed into the river. Now, it was about 50 degrees. And so we were out there watching, and this guy who was out there, I guess, was a captain, or I don't know the, the ranks in the Coast Guard or anything, but he was important. And so he started telling us what's going on. They're getting ready to drop those bodies off of the back of that boat, so there'll be some bodies. They were fake mannequins, by the way, just so you know. They weren't actually throwing bodies off the boat. And we're going to drop those bodies off the boat there, and these guys have to get them out. But we don't have enough bodies even this time. You know, we've used watermelons. We've used real people. We've, I mean, he went on and on about all the stuff they use. So talk to him for a minute. By the way, I cannot do a Boston accent, so I'm doing the best I can. Okay, if you want to come up here and do it for me, it would be great. Park the car in the yard. So, so he's talking to us, and, uh, and he wasn't from Boston. <clears throat> and he said... I said, how long have you lived in Boston? He goes, oh, I didn't even want to move here when I came to Boston. I didn't even want to come. And here's what he said. I'm a Yankees fan. And I looked at Kristen, and you need to understand something. I said to her, do you see how important sports are to some people? <laughs> to which she doesn't get. I mean, she could care. She would rather watch the band at halftime in a college game than the, right, right, okay. So some of you relate to that, right? Now, here's the thing I said to her. I said, it's amazing what matters to some people. This guy didn't want to move here because he was a Yankees fan. Now, I will tell you, one of the highlights of my trip is when we were leaving, going through TSA. By the way, this is probably a bad time to do this because you're still in TSA. I said to the TSA agent as I walked through the little machine that decides whether or not you'll actually get on the plane, I said to the guy, Hey, I heard Brady's coming in town this weekend. He said, yeah, he's coming back, yeah. I said, I'm sorry we had to steal him from you. Well, that's all right. We still love him or something. I'm like, oh, it's a good thing he didn't say, all right, come to the side. We're doing a full check on you, right? A cavity search. Thanks for that. So, so here's the thing. So here's the thing. What do you care about? See, we talk a lot about the physical in our world. 
Um, somebody even recently came up with what Jesus might have looked like. And of course, I looked at it and I said, that's the Hollywood version of Jesus. Everything is the Hollywood version. We've got to make somebody look a way we think they should look now. And guess what? We don't know. We know he, he wasn't followed because of his looks. I can tell you that. We, we don't see that anywhere. But, but what matters to you? See, most people have not even thought about their soul and the, and, and the shape their soul is in. If you want to grow as a person, if you want to grow as a Christian, understanding your soul and making sure, like David said, why so downcast all my soul? And evaluating that last song we sang comes from the Psalms. To evaluate, where am I at? What's going on in my soul? And we're going to use the word soul and spirit interchangeably today as we look at Romans chapter 8. We're going to look at it in the same way that Paul looks at it. And so let's look at three things today about the soul. Number one, it can connect with God's spirit. So in chapter 7, Paul talks about how basically I can't keep the law, which is awesome because he's like, Paul's like the most Spiritual person you would have ever met. He like did all the laws. He was like amazing. Uh, he was trained under the last uh, uh, known uh, most important Gamaliel. The most important person of the oral law. And yet he said, can't do it. Can't do it. But then he gets to chapter 8. And he says, here's the real deal. Therefore, Romans 8, 1 through 5. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. What sinful flesh? Okay. Your, your flesh wants what it wants. Your, your flesh just wants, when you're hungry, you need a Snickers, right? Right? Or it affects your emotions, right? That's why we get... People Snickers in that commercial, all right? Because they turn into fish or whoever, all right? The law, I just dated myself again. Law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, okay. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned the sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who don't live according to the Cookie. flesh, but according to the spirit. See, if we begin to grow and we begin to understand what's going on in our lives, we can differentiate what is happening and we can, in our soul, no matter what's going on in our circumstances, we can take time to connect with God to say, God, I, I need your presence through this. Just like in that video, I need your presence. I'm struggling. Here's what's going on. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. Listen, if you follow your flesh, you will eat all the time. Whether it's food, visual food, internet food. The soul, the soul is hungry, but the soul is hungry differently than the flesh. The flesh is hungry for everything it sees. Some of you are hungry just from me saying the word hungry this morning. Some of you are thinking about bacon. I have no idea why, but there it is. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. So Paul's saying early on here, hey, what are we thinking about? What are we focusing on? What matters to us? Are we focusing only on fleshly things? Are we focusing on entertainment and comfort? America loves comfort. We worship comfort. We have a comfy chair. How many of you have a chair that is your chair? At that, right? Okay. Right? So we like that chair. Don't take my chair. Don't mess with my comfort. Don't slow me down in the left-hand lane on I-95. Right? Everything's about us in the flesh. Our flesh says, what is your problem? You're in my way. That's our flesh. And one of the things as parents, as we raise our children, that we try to do is try to help our kids to not be selfish in a world where they need to love the people around them. Now, as we start this series, what you're going to see, I'm going to use the Roman, Romans 8 idea of who we are as people, body, mind, and spirit. So let me just give you, read this, and then I'll give you a little insight. I'll often use both soul and spirit interchangeably. There's times that their meanings overlap in Scripture. Time out. 
we love Tupperware when it comes to defining things. We love to say, that's my flesh, that's my emotions, okay, that's my spirit. We love Tupperware. The truth is, there is no Tupperware in your life. And, and sometimes our lives overlap. So I get hungry and I get hangry, right? My emotions and my physical needs. But sometimes the truth is, in my spirit, I've walked away from God. And so it affects the other parts of my life. And it continues, scholars debate the difference. Oh, that's an understatement. The soul is considered the seat of the senses, desires, affections, appetites. The spirit is the part that connects or refuses to connect to God. The important thing about soul keeping is to recognize how God's spirit influences your soul life. Now, here's my concern. Is that you're going to be so concerned with how things work that you're going to focus on how things work instead of focusing on your relationship with God. I want to encourage you during this series just to say, God, would you quiet my soul? God, would you speak to my soul? Sometimes we call it the heart. God, would you speak to my heart? And allow him to speak to that part of you that connects with him. Because there's always a very loud part in your life that's going, cookie, give me cookie. And the only way you can get that out of your head and out of your life is to allow the Holy Spirit to work in you. Number two, it brings peace and life with his spirit. Listen, the goal of your life is not peace. The world thinks that the goal of life is peace. And you can do everything wrong and have peace. Did you know that? People say, well, I'm just looking for peace. I just, if I'm just a peaceful person, then that means I love God. No, nay, nay. Listen, there are people right now that are doing horribly things wrong and they have peace. They're hurting other people. They have peace because they don't care. There are also people who are doing nothing to help anyone else, and they have peace. Why? Because they finally said, I just want to be left alone. Just leave me alone. I've talked to people in the last few years about, would you, would you rather work in a cubicle by yourself or on a team? Over and over, by myself. Leave me alone. And we think that being left alone means peace. And it does. But it doesn't mean life. God's goal is for us to have life and peace. To be able to be around others. And by the way, when you're around others, one of the things you discover... I had a lady say to me yesterday, you know, there's only two commands. That's pretty easy. I go, yeah, except one of them is to love people. And I don't always like people. Which she heard a pastor say that. It was an unusual look I got from her. Where's your church? <laughs> She might be picketing this morning. I'm not sure. Now, part of our problem is we don't understand the spirit. We don't, we don't even pay attention to it. Let me show you something. I got to go to the Boston Symphony. And I know you can't really see this picture really well. These are my awesome seats. But that guy on the stage is a guy named John Williams. You may have heard of him. He did a couple of movies. Jaws, Star Wars. E.T., Harry Potter, Superman. So we're listening to John Williams. He wrote this symphony not that long ago, I think two years ago. And he actually rewrote a song for the lady who came and played violin, who plays violin on all those things. He considers her the best violinist in the world. He wrote a song for her uh, from a movie called uh, The Long Way Home or The Long Goodbye. The Long Goodbye. He wrote a, a version of The Long Goodbye that he had never written for that performance. I knew none of the songs. Nobody knew any of the songs. As we sat there, it sounded like Jaws, E.T., Superman, and right? But the middle parts where it's kind of dissonant. And it was an hour and a half, that part. The guy behind us, was, that was the best. That was awesome. The guy behind us kept trying to fall asleep and he did the church thing. We didn't know any of the songs, so we couldn't participate. Because I had been a percussionist years ago, I was able to watch the drummers. It actually got to the point I was watching the drummers going, oh, let me see what they're doing. So at least I had some interest in something, but I had no idea musically what was happening. If at some point they had broken into Star Wars, I would have been like, yeah, got my lighter out. I don't have a lighter, but no idea. So I was lost. 
The truth for some of us is because we've never looked at what's happening with our soul. We've never studied scripture about our soul. Is, is we just kind of don't know what it's about. So we're lost. Maybe we're even bored. Maybe we don't even know what's going on. And, and so here's what Paul says, picking up in verse 6. The mind governed by the flesh is death. Why? Because when you follow everything, when you are the cookie monster and you follow everything you want, it does not end well. Imagine if you could physically eat everything you wanted. When would it stop? I love good food. I love good donuts. And these ladies bring donuts every week and they always have at least one that's my favorite donut. Walk away from the donut, right? The flesh leads to death, but listen, the mind, now we're going to the second part, the mind governed by the spirit. What's a governor? A governor, they put on trucks. You know why they put them on trucks? So that trucker can't drive 100 miles an hour. Right? They slow them down. They put a governor on it to keep them from going too fast. What the mind governed by the spirit is, here it is, life and peace. Not just peace, but life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You can't please God while you're being cookie monster. You, however, aren't in the realm of the flesh, but you're in the realm of the spirit if the spirit of God lives in you. If you're a Christian, the Bible says the spirit of God lives in you. 2 Corinthians 1.22 says that's a deposit, which I love that illustration. And if anyone doesn't have the spirit, they don't belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death, and not just physical death, sometimes our bodies are starting to fall apart. You know, when you were a kid, you could fall out of a tree and you were fine. Fall off your bike, you were fine. Now you pick up a package wrong and you got a week of going, oh, I don't know what I did. I, I just turned. I sneezed. I think I'm going to die, right? So that's our physical death. But here's the deal. The Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, who who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies because of His Spirit that lives in you. In the middle of a body that's a tent, that's falling apart, that doesn't always do well, that we have soreness and headaches and all kind of problems, He says, even in the middle of that, His Spirit gives you life. That's why Jesus, when He talked to Nicodemus in John chapter 3, had no idea. Jesus says, you have to be born again. And I think Nicodemus was being sarcastic, like, uh, I don't think I can do that. Nicodemus was not that dumb. Let me read this next quote. I love it. If your soul is healthy, no external circumstance can destroy your life. If your soul is unhealthy, no external circumstance can redeem your life. And we all know people who no matter what you give them, no matter what you do for them, no matter what happens, they are never ever at peace. They're never, ever happy. They're never fulfilled. Why? Because of physical? No. Because of mental? Well, maybe. <laughs> but they have a restless soul. So they're never at rest. They're always looking for more. Number three. So it can connect with God's spirit. It can bring peace, life with the spirit. It can overcome our flesh. So I want you to think of this and, and look at the Romans 8 version, body, mind, and soul. That's the way Paul kind of divvies it up. So you can think of, of body, we already talked about like the cookie monster, right? And the cookie monster says, me want cookie. When you find yourself selfish and self-centered, me, 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 get out of me way. Me have things to do, places to go. It's too hot in here. It's too cold in here. Me don't like that person. Me need relaxation. Me don't like when pastor does that voice. Right? That's our body. If we let that rule, what are we in trouble? And listen, if you pay attention, somebody actually texted me last night and said, all I'm hearing now is Cookie Monster. <laughs> but if you pay attention, you'll notice. You, you pull out here and the light's red and you go, me want light to change now. Right? Isn't it funny? That's our impatience. All of those things. Our flesh. Give me what I want now. Our mind is a little more like Kermit the Frog. Okay, now listen. I know you like cookies. Uh, but you really ought to eat some celery now and then. Because otherwise uh, you're going to die. And so uh, I'll tell Miss Piggy. Uh, she'll bring you some, uh, 
some carrots and uh, maybe some celery, and you'll be okay. No, no, me want cookie. Uh, listen, if you eat cookies all the time, you're going to die of diabetes. So uh, let me, uh, I'll be right back, right? So your mind sometimes, so you get a book called Eat This, Not That, because you know you're hungry, but you know you can't just eat cookies all the time. So you try to find something to fill the gap. That's your mind trying to figure out how do I deal with my flesh? How do I, how do I make this thing work? How do I exercise? I don't ever want to exercise. By the way, you people who love to exercise, I don't know. Who is your cookie monster? Because mine doesn't like to exercise. Mine yells every morning, do not exercise. You sleep. You sleep. Sleep better than work. Uh, listen, you really ought to get up and maybe uh, do a couple push-ups. Uh, maybe run some. Uh, quit eating. Uh, don't go on vacation anymore because you gained like a million pounds. But here's the thing. When you're ruled by your spirit, when you allow the Holy Spirit to combine with your spirit then there's a force way beyond, way beyond your mind and your self-control, way beyond your spirit. He can actually change, you ready for this? He can actually change your desires. Where you're like, you wake up one day and you go, me no want cookie. Me want relationship with God. Where all of a sudden, your desires for things, now the flesh will still sneak in, don't get me wrong. But listen to what he says here. Therefore, Brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it's not to the flesh. Oh, if you don't like this verse. Not to the flesh, to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you'll die. But listen, if by the Spirit, what do you have to do? Put to death. By the way, does that sound easy? Put to death the misdeeds of the body. So what does that mean? That means sometimes your body continues to want to do what it wants to do. There's still lust and greed and selfishness and self-centeredness and your body continues to do that. But by the Spirit, you can put those things to death where a struggle that was a big struggle years ago is now not a struggle as much anymore. Boy, I wonder how that happened, the Holy Spirit working in your life. And then it says, put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. And this is not just talking about eternity it's talking about life and peace. Because if you walk in the flesh all the time, it's exhausting. Chris and I were on the train and we went by one of the colleges and I noticed a bunch of college students on our train for about four stops. And they looked so sad. They were all on their phones, not a word to each other. And I said to Kristen later, I said, that's a life without meaning, or they're hungover, right? That's a life that doesn't know what they want. They're just doing what they have to do. And by the way, even as Christians, if we're not careful, we can fall into that trap of just doing things and not saying, God, like David said, why so downcast, O oh my soul? Or Lord, I want to bless you with my soul. Lord, I, I lift my soul to you. Turn my heart, my mind, my flesh even to you. By the way, can I tell you just a little side note, Dave? This is for you. A uh, little side note for you. Sometimes when you raise your hands in worship, and I know for some of you, you don't want to, and I don't care whether you do or not. It doesn't hurt my feelings. But sometimes I do it to tell my flesh, hey, hey, by the way, wake up. This is the God you're worshiping. Flesh, you're going to worship God whether you want to or not. I know you want cookies, but you're getting vegetables today, right? <laughs> If you want to grow as a person, if you want to see a glimpse into eternity, ask God to begin to show you what's happening in your soul. Now, here's the most important thing today. If you're not a Christian and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, when you surrender your life to him, when you surrender your soul to him, the Bible says he exchanges your sinful nature, your sin for his righteousness. And begins to change you, not from the outside in, not because you're doing a bunch of things with your body, but from the inside out. He changes your desires, your needs, your wants. If you want to do that today, you want to become a Christian, I'd love to talk to you about after the service. About what it means that Jesus came and died for us. He rose again so that when we surrender to him, we can become Christians. It's not just about knowing a bunch of things, it's about surrender. The next six weeks, I want to encourage you to attend virtually in person, biblical teaching of the soul. I want to encourage you to find a small group. There's an online small group taking place. There's, uh, I think, a, a sheet out on the table that has all those groups. We posted it online. You should have gotten an email yesterday if you didn't sign up. 
And then I want to encourage you, set aside a daily time of prayer and Bible study. Why? To take care of your soul. Take care of your soul. If you're a Christian in here today, I want to encourage you, begin to think about what's happening in your soul today. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you for this new series. I thank you for this time. I pray that you would bless each one that's listened, whether it's online or here. Father, I pray for anyone who doesn't know you that today would be the day they surrender their whole life, their soul, their body, their spirit to you. Lord, we surrender even our minds to you today that get so distracted by so many things. Father, I pray that you'd renew our souls, that you'd clear the sin from our souls. Father, that we would be able to hear you clearly as we read your word, as we get to know you. Turn our hearts and minds towards you today. In Jesus' name, amen.